Welcome to the Leaf Hat tutorial for knitting flat. If you're a new knitter looking to knit a stylish triple brim beanie like this on two needles without knitting in the round, then this tutorial is for you. This style of hat is everywhere right now, including in my best-selling muscle wear pattern. I think it's been our most popular pattern the last two, if not three years. And I wanted to create with Leaf a sort of version of the style that was really specifically written for brand new knitters. So if you've knit something like a garter stitch scarf before, you've done a few basic swatches, then this pattern is ideal for you as a next project. You can learn some new skills, but there won't be anything too challenging. And something I hear a lot from newer knitters who want to make a hat like this is that muscle bra is just a little bit too much of a jump. Um, it's a basic project in a lot of ways. It's all stock in it but it uses a few different increases and decreases and it begins with quite a tricky center out cast on and working with either DPNs or magic loop, working a small circumference in the round. So Leaf, I went through all of those issues and really specifically tried to make a pattern that used the most basic skills and that was written in a way that would be really accessible for new knitters who are also new to following written patterns. And I wanted to make this video as an accompaniment to the written pattern. Leaf is really is the perfect project for an adventurous beginner. If you recently learned to knit and you know how to cast on, work a knit stitch and a purl stitch, and how to maintain an even-ish tension, so your stitches are all roughly the same size, then Leaf will be a great stepping stone project where you can learn some new skills in an accessible way. Knitting Leaf, you'll learn to read a ridden pattern, how to swatch and check your gauge, how to read your knitting and sort of recognize which stitches are which on your needles, how to shape your knitting with simple decreases, and how to seam a project together at the end. If you already know how to knit in the round or you'd like to learn, the leaf pattern includes directions for both knitting it flat and knitting it in the round. And we do have a separate video for knitting in the round. So you might want to jump over there if you want to knit leaf in the round, but if you want to knit it flat, then stick with me and I will show you how to do that. Alongside this video, you'll need a copy of the Leaf Hat Pattern, which you can purchase from my website, azoto.com, or from Ravelry, which is a knitting website where you can find lots of patterns. The pattern is a downloadable PDF. You can use it on a digital device or print it out. And it includes directions for knitting the hat flat and in the round. It's written to be really accessible for beginners. And it also includes step-by-step -step tutorials for many of the skills used in the pattern and that I'm gonna cover in this video. So if you want to watch the video and then you'll have a sort of backup for a quick refresher in the actual pattern document as well. So you can choose which to learn from, which works best for your learning style. The leaf hat pattern includes six sizes from baby to an adult extra large. So you can knit it for the whole family and it's worked bottom up to unfold this brim so I can show you it's worked from the bottom up and this is actually the cast on edge so you'll basically work two rectangles one for the brim and one from the crown they'll be attached to each other so you'll start with casting on for the brim and then knit a rectangle of stockinette stitch you'll then flip that over and knit another rectangle of stockinette so that the first one is reverse stockinette and that means when you turn it up like this and seam it together, then everything looks smooth. I'll show you that on the wrong side of the hat. So you can sort of see the transition in the fabrics here. And then at the top of the crown, you'll work some rapid decreases to gather in the top of this hat. I really love this style for the kind of slouchy effect it creates. It's got a great kind of cozy look. It looks really good with a pom-pom. And it's also really easy to knit. So it's a great way to shape a crown for your first hat project. And then when you're done, you will seam the sort of vertical sides together and then whip stitch this brim. So I'll show you all of those steps. And that is the leaf hat. Not sure it's gonna work with my bun very well, but let's get started. For the leaf hat, you'll need a copy of the pattern. You will also need yarn. I used a DK weight or a light worsted weight yarn. That's just a worsted weight yarn that's on the sort of thinner side of the worsted category. And you can use something like an acrylic or a polyester or any wool yarn or a blend of the two. 
you want to look for a yarn that's got a little bit of stretch and that's got a sort of smooth squishy texture if your yarn comes in a skein like this you will need to wind it into a ball before you begin you can open that up it's sort of a big loop when you open this up take the label off and untwist it it makes a big loop of yarn you'll want to wind that into a ball you can drape it over a friend's hands if someone is willing to literally lend you a hand or you can drape it over um, the back of a chair i actually like to sit on the floor or on the sofa and put it over my knees and um, whatever helps you hold that loop open so you can wind it into a ball when you're purchasing your yarn, you'll want to double check the number of yards or meters given in the pattern compared to the number in your skein or ball of yarn. So this skein has 275 yards, so I want to double check that that one skein will be enough for the size I want to make. If not, I'll need to get two skeins. Needles. You can use straight or circular needles to knit flat. Here I've got a pair of straight needles. These ones I think are bamboo, which can be nice if you're a newer knitter because your stitches sort of grip the needle a little bit and won't slide off. You will want your hat to fit and part of getting the fit right with knitting is getting the gauge right. I'm going to show you how to make a swatch to check how your gauge compares to mine. Gauge is the number of stitches that you get over one inch or two and a half centimeters compared to how many stitches I got over the same distance. You might not knit a little bit tighter or a little bit looser than me and that would mean that you will need to change your needle size so unless you already know that you tend to knit much tighter or much looser than patterns start out with the four millimeter size i've given in the pattern but know that you might need to adjust the size of needle that you need to use to get the right gauge you'll also need a tape measure or a ruler a blunt tapestry needle and a small pair of scissors the leaf pattern includes directions for a little mini swatch because this is a hat you can get away with doing a small swatch if you're knitting a bigger project that you want to fit well like a garment like a sweater then you'll want to make a much bigger swatch and we do have a tutorial on swatching and on what gauge means um, on our blog so i'll put links to those in the show notes down below for the mini swatch I cast on 16 stitches and then I worked in stockinette so that's purl one row, knit one row for about two and a half inches and then I bound off. So I've got this little mini swatch. I'm going to measure the gauge. So I'm going to measure how many stitches I have over two inches or five centimeters. I've got a little gauge measuring tool. It's kind of nice to have but you don't need that. You can use a ruler. And I want to just line that up with two with kind of whole stitches of my fabric and then I'm going to count across so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so that's perfect if you've got ten stitches for two inches or five centimeters you're good to go you can cast on for your hat if you have more stitches that means your tension or your gauge is tighter than mine and the easiest way to make your stitches bigger is to use a larger needle size so if you have more than 10 stitches, go up a needle size. If you have fewer than 10 stitches, then you're knitting looser than I am and your stitches need to get a bit smaller. So to make your stitches smaller, the simplest thing to do is to go down a needle size. So that's if you have more stitches than 10, go up a needle size. If you have fewer than 10 stitches, go down a needle size. The number of rows that you get is important and it's often important for projects that have shaping because the difference in your row gauge can affect the slope of that shaping. For something like a sweater, that can be really important. This hat, we are just gonna knit to a certain length. So don't worry too much about the row gauge. Focus on getting the stitch gauge correct. First step of knitting the actual hat is to cast on. So I've cast on the correct number of stitches for my size. If you're new to reading patterns with multiple sizes, you'll see that the cast on directions have several numbers separated by commas and brackets or parentheses. So the first number is for the smallest baby size, and then each subsequent number is for one size larger. So the order the numbers are in in the cast on directions and later on in the pattern correspond to the order that they're given in in the sizing information on that page of the pattern. 
So before you get started, you might want to get a highlighter or if you're working on a tablet or a phone, you might want to digitally highlight or circle all the numbers that pertain to your size. I'm making the adult medium size, so that's the fourth number given in the sizing information, and that means throughout the pattern, I'm always gonna use the fourth number when more than one number is given. So I've cast on the number of stitches required for the adult medium size, and I use the long tail cast on method. That's my favorite general purpose cast on. And if you're not familiar with the long tail method, you can use your preferred cast on method. But if you want to check it out and practice the long tail, um, you'll find my tutorial video for that. I've put a link up here for you and also in the show notes. My first row is gonna be a pearl row. We're creating a rectangle of stockinette fabric, which will eventually be flipped over and be reverse stockinette. And that's gonna form the brim of our hat. Stockinette fabric, if you haven't worked it before, is created by alternating rows of knits and pearls when you're knitting flat. So I'm going to work a pearl row simply because my long tail cast on creates a little row of bumps on the wrong side. And it's nice to have all of the bumps on my fabric on the same side. So by purling across this row, I'll be putting the bumps from my cast on on the same side as the sort of pearl bump, the bumpy side of my fabric. And I'm not going to slip the first and last stitch of each row. If you've made something like a scarf, then you might have done that. It can create a really nice edge when those side edges are sort of visible on your finished project. But we're going to seam this hat together, um, so it's usually neater to not slip your first stitches when you're going to seam the edges together. So don't do anything special with those first stitches and purl to the end of this row. Row two is a knit row, so I'm gonna do that. And then row three, I'll have flipped my fabric over again, so the bumpy side is towards me, so I'm gonna purl that row. And then rows two and three, repeating those, establish our stockinette pattern. Here's what your fabric should look like after working rows one to three. You can see I've got a smooth side starting to happen and a bumpy side starting to happen. Ever put your project down in the middle of a row or maybe just you're not quite sure which row you last worked it's really helpful to learn to read your knitting so that when you pick it up you can look at your knitting and know what you should be doing so if you pick up your project and with it in your left hand with the stitches on your left needle if when you look at those stitches they're sort of smooth and they look like little V shapes that means that you will be knitting that row if however you have these little bumps then you should be purling. Learning to read your knitting like that is a really useful skill that will help you when things get more complicated, when you're doing more complex knit and purl patterns like ribbing or moss stitch, so that you can always glance at your work and know whether you should work a knit or a purl. It's much easier than keeping track of counting or tracking which row you worked with pen and paper. After a lot more knitting, you should have a rectangle that looks something like this. And this looks about the right length, so I'm gonna get my tape measure and measure that. And stuck in a fabric, you may have noticed, always curls on both the cast on and bound off edges, and it tends to curl sort of under at the sides. So when you're measuring, you do wanna make sure that you uncurl the fabric. Now smooth it out on the needle, I've got quite a short straight needle here, so I've sort of got to bunch it up at one end to get a nice smooth section to measure. And then I'm going to measure from just the bottom of the needle down to the cast on edge. And then I can compare that to the measurements for the brim section given in the pattern to see if I need to knit any more rows or if I'm ready to move on to the transition to the crown section. And just a thing to note before you do the crown section is that you want to finish up this brim section so that the last row that you worked was a purl row. You can tell that that is what you've done because you should have the yarn at the right and um, close to the needle tip with the smooth side facing you. If the yarn is on the other side with the smooth side facing you, then you need to work one more purl row before you move on to the transition section. In the brim section, I've got this rectangle of stockinette on my needles, and the last row I worked was a wrong side row, so a purl row. 
And the thing that means that we can put the seam between this cast on edge of the brim and the top edge of the brim, kind of, so it's tucked inside the fold over of the brim. The thing that lets us do that is switching the fabrics. So if we knit the whole hat in stockinette, then we would have to turn this brim edge under, sort of, this way, under the, to the wrong side of the hat, and then we would fold the brim up, and that would put the seam inside the hat. And you might be able to feel that, it might be a little bit uncomfortable. So to avoid that discomfort, we're going to flip this over, and then when the hat's finished, we'll be turning this up, sort of to the outside of the hat, seaming it, and then when this part is folded up again, the seam will be tucked inside the fold over of the brim, and you won't be able to feel it and it'll be completely hidden visually. So to switch our fabrics, we want the bottom half to be essentially reverse stockinette when the hat is finished and the top half, the crown half, to be stockinette. So you create a stockinette fabric by knitting one row and purling one row. You're basically putting the smooth V of every stitch on one side and the bump of every stitch, the kind of purl bump, on the back of the fabric or on the opposite side. So to switch directions, what we're going to do is we're going to add in an extra purl row to kind of offset our knit purl pattern so that up until here, all of these will be on this side, but after here, all of these will be on the other side. The other way to think of that is that you're flipping over which side of your fabric is the right side and the wrong side. So my first row of our transition now is going to be a purl row. Might feel a bit strange because looking at reading your knitting, you've got all these little V's here and you're not used to doing a pro row on this side. You can see now I've done a few stitches that we've clearly got the little bumps of those pearls on this smooth side of the fabric. I've completed this first pro row and looking at it on the needle, I've got these little bumps along here, sort of a ridge. That's just what I want on the other side if we flip it over. I've got little V shapes here. So looking at my knitting for stockinette, that would tell me I need to do a knit row. And the next row in the pattern is a knit row. So I'm going to knit across. Again, it's just a normal knit row. With both transitional rows, you can see the sort of switch in the fabric more easily. If I pull it down and on the other side, we've got now two ridges, two sort of rows of pearl bumps, and you can really see how the fabric has kind of flipped over. These form the first two rows of the crown section, so then the next part is to continue working in stockinette with that sort of pearl one row, knit one row, making sure that you're maintaining the fabric you've just set up, which side is which, until the total length measures what's given in the pattern. It does vary for each size and then we'll work the crown decreases. I knit until my hat is the total correct length given in the pattern before starting the crown shaping. So I've got my, with the right side facing, it's currently facing you, not me, I've got reverse stockinette at the bottom and then stockinette at the top. And that reverse stockinette section is just very slightly longer than this stockinette section because it's going to be folded so much when it's done. And now I'm ready to start my first decrease row. That is a right side row, so make sure that you have just worked a wrong side row. That means that when I've got the right side facing, I've got the stitches on my left needle, the yarn's attached here, I'm ready to begin a right side row. If you're a new knitter and you're new to following written patterns, the first decrease row might introduce something new. And that's the sort of grammar of pattern repeats. So in the written directions, we've got an opening bracket or a parenthesis, and then it says knit two, knit two together, and then there's a close bracket. And those brackets are there to show you that the instructions within them are a block that you'll then repeat. And the pattern after the brackets will tell you how many times to repeat those, or that you should keep repeating them until something else happens. If you've done any coding or programming, this might feel kind of familiar. So in this case, we've got our knit two, knit two together, that's our repeating block, and then it says until two stitches remain. 
So we're going to repeat that block of instructions until two stitches remain. For our first decreased row, we've got our little block of repeating instructions. So that's knit two, knit two together. So knit one, knit two, and then a knit two together. If you haven't worked in knit two together before, you haven't done any decreasing, we do have a more in-depth, much slower video. So I'll make sure to link that so that you can pop over there practice your knit two together and then come back here and continue. So knit these next two together. So they're one stitch, then knit two. So I'm repeating that block again, knit two together. Repeat it again, knit two, knit two together. I'm gonna continue repeating that little block of instructions until I've got just two stitches left at the end of the row. At the end of the row, I've got my two stitches left, and I'm just going to knit those two. And now we're going to work a plain purl row, and then work the second decrease row. I've worked my wrong side purl row, and I'm now ready to work decrease row two. You can see that I've got my decreases coming together. So this was my decrease row, the stitch above the decreases, and then I've got a plain row on the needles. And if you want to double check that you've got your decreases all done correctly, there is a stitch count at the end of each of the decrease rows, so you can always go along and count your stitches and double check that your stitch count matches what's given in the pattern for your size. If it is off by a stitch or two, um, don't worry about it. Just leave it be this crown gathers together at the top so you won't really see any little discrepancies and if that means you've got one only one stitch left to knit at the end of a row or maybe three that's fine just knit those don't worry about it too much those stitch currents are there as little little checkpoint for you so that you can check your knitting against them and have the reassurance that you're on track and then decrease row two um, begins with another little block of repeating instructions. It's almost the same as our first decrease row, but this time we're just working one knit stitch in between each knit together. So I've got knit one, knit two together, and then repeat that again. Knit one, knit two together. And again, I'm doing this until I've got two stitches left at the end of the row. At the end of the row, I'm going to knit my last two stitches. That's the instruction that comes after the little repeating section in brackets. And then turn and purl back across. So again, we've got a plain wrong side row in between the decrease rows. I'm ready to work my final decrease row. And this decrease row begins with a knit one. And then the little repeating block is just knit two together until two stitches remain. And sometimes you wouldn't have that knit two together within brackets because it is just one stitch. You don't strictly need brackets to group it together. Um, but we've included in this pattern just to make it slightly clearer that you're doing knit two together repeatedly and not just doing it once. I'm gonna continue working knit two together until I've got just one stitch left. And then I'm going to knit that last stitch. And you can see with these three decrease rows, I've really reduced my stitch count. Everything's gathered together. Lay at the top of the crown, you'll need scissors and a darning needle. You might want to cut your tail of yarn with some extra length so that you can use it to sew your sort of back seam on your hat. If you want to do that, I would cut it at least twice as long as the hat, and that should give you plenty for sewing the seam and weaving in the ends. So I'm going to cut mine about here. And then with the wrong side facing me, I'm going to slip each stitch off of my knitting needle onto my tapestry needle and therefore onto my yarn. So I'm going to insert the tapestry needle as if to purl from right to left into a stitch, slide it off the needle, and then pull that yarn through. And you can do a few stitches at once onto the tapestry needle before you pull the yarn through. 
I'm not worried about pulling it tight yet. I can tighten it up at the end, just working all the way across to transfer those stitches off of the knitting needle onto my yarn. slid off all the stitches, you can set your knitting needle aside. This particular yarn is fairly sturdy, but I find it helps to pull these stitches nice and close together and not have a hole at the top to go back through all the stitches a second time. Because we're going to pull this together into a circle, I'm going to go kind of around my circle rather than double back on myself. So just go back through each stitch and make sure you're going through the stitches not through the yarn and if one of your stitches is kind of trying to pop out you can kind of gently tug on both sides of the yarn that you've got threaded through it to pull that stitch up once you've got a full double loop of yarn through all of your stitches give that a really good firm tug and pull all of the stitches together so that you don't have any kind of hole left in the middle. And before continuing with your back seam, it can help to just secure that end by kind of making a couple of stitches on top of them, on top of each other on the inside. That seems good. I don't think I'm gonna get a hole there. We're going to join the back seam of the hat and turn it into something that looks a lot more like a hat and then after working the back seam we will fold the broom up and whip stitch the cast on edge to this top of this sort of reverse stockinette section. If you're new to seaming projects and you haven't worked mattress stitch before we do have a full mattress stitch tutorial and you can find that here. I'll also put the link in the show notes. When you're starting at the crown with the yarn attached, it can be a little bit tricky to sort of uncurl everything and see the edges. There's no reason that you can't start your seam at the bottom edge. Um, you might find that easier because you can lay it flat. I've got my longer tail of yarn attached to this crown. I didn't plan ahead and leave a long tail I'm casting on. So I'm going to work my seam from the top down doesn't matter which you do. Mattress stitch is always worked from the right side. So I've got my stockinette crown facing outwards. I'm gonna work my way all the way down until I get to the transition in textures. So where that stockinette crown turns into a reverse stockinette brim. And when I get to there, I'm going to want to switch which side I'm working the seam from so that when my hat's complete, and the sort of, the brim is folded up like this, that our visible seam where the edges come together is tucked in and hidden. So I'll show you how to do that switch once I get to that point. I've seamed together my top section, my crown, my stockinette section, and now I want to bring my yarn through to the other side to work the rest of my mattress stitch with the stockinette sides of the crown together. So I've actually got one little bar between stitches left on this side. So I'm just gonna go under that one stitch. Then I'm gonna turn everything to the other side and then get myself set up in a good position to bring these stockinette edges together. And now my yarn's attached to this side, so I'm gonna come across to this side and then make my next stitch over here. And you can see I've now got my sort of selvage, my almost raw edges of my seam here. And then in this section, they'll be on the other side. 
So they'll always be on the inside of the fabric when we're wearing the hat. When you've finished sewing your sort of back seam, your hat should look something like this. I've turned it so that the right side of the hat, the right side of the crown is facing outwards. So that's the smooth side of the crown and then the bumpy side of the brim. And our final step is gonna be folding up the brim and whip stitching our cast on edge to the sort of top of that reverse stockinette brim section. If you happen to have enough yarn attached here, you can of course use those yarn ends to sew your seam. I don't really have a long end attached and I want you to be able to see what I'm doing really clearly. So I'm gonna join in this contrast color. I've got something nice and bright so it should be easy to see the path of my stitches. I find it easiest to put my left hand inside the hat. It's always good not to sew two layers together. And then I'm going to begin by going under the sort of top bump of the very first stitch to the left of my seam at the top of this reverse stockinette brim section. So under that bump, and then I'm gonna bring my needle down and go under the sort of first loop on my cast on edge. And because I'm joining in a new piece of yarn, I'm just gonna leave a bit of a tail. I'll weave that in at the end. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. So in my next, sti uh, next stitch along to the left, under the first bump on the top of the brim, and then one loop from the cast on edge. And do that again. So continue repeating that, working your way around. You can see, just like mattress stitch, I'm not pulling this too tight. Um, if I pull it really tight, so I sort of pull both ends, I'm gonna get more of a firm ridge there. So having a fairly relaxed tension can actually give you a sort of smoother effect. So continue stitching just like that until you get all the way around back to where you started and then weave in all your ends and your hat is done. The final step is to put on your finished hat, wear it proudly and I hope you're really proud of yourself. I hope you're pleased with your finished leaf hat. I would love to see your finished projects. Do make sure to tag them, uh, use the hashtag leaf hat, tag me as Azolda on Instagram and let me know in the comments how you got on. Do ask any questions that you have about knitting the hat. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're interested in growing your knitting skills and building a handmade wardrobe. Um, I'll be releasing new tutorials regularly. And until I see you next time, take care and happy knitting. Mm -hmm.